All right, guys, we're gonna be checking out Mauser broom handle today. Let's see if she'll work for me. Interesting. Guys, welcome back. This is Eric here with Iraq Veteran 8888. Uh, today we're going to be talking about a definite oddball. Uh, this is the uh, 1896 Mauser broom handle. Um, these guns are definitely unique. Until 1935, this was the highest velocity, uh, pretty much most modern type of uh, <laughs> cartridge of its type to come along in, in a long time. The Colt Walker is definitely a really, really powerful gun uh, in its day and everything like that. But the Mauser broom handle really changed things a lot. You know, at, at a time when a lot of guns were revolvers, they were single actions, they were, you know, all these different types of revolvers that we were using. Uh, this was really one of the first commercially and militarily viable semi-automatic handguns ever. Like this gun really paved the way for what we know today uh, in terms of handgun technology. And it really shows how things have progressed because this you saw that I just fed the uh, gun with a stripper clip uh, so it's a 10 shot integral box one of the unique features of the Mauser broom handle is that the magazine is fixed into the gun and it is in front of the trigger guard okay there's not a whole lot of guns out there that have the magazine actually in front of the trigger guard uh, so it is in front of the trigger it's a 10 shot repeater it's a really really interesting gun and uh, you know it's it's a German design so, you know, they were always on the forefront of designing a lot of killer things. I mean, like around 1908, uh, the Luger came around. And then, of course, you know, all the other gun designs that Germany was really famous for making a lot of crazy things. There was a gun, actually a couple of different gun designs that came prior to the Mauser broom handle, uh, like the Brochards and a few of the other odds and ends. If you, uh, if you just go and, like, search for them on the Internet, you'll see that there were some kind of, like, experimental guns that, in their own regard, they were relatively successful but this was really like the first big break that mauser had in terms of their handguns that just really put them on the map i mean mauser broom handle is one of the most iconic and recognized gun designs anywhere i mean these things are awesome and they've been used by a ton of different militaries around the world for a long time they you know went through two world wars and beyond heck these these things are probably used in some small degree all the way up through vietnam in some cases uh, so these things have been around the world, they've been used, they've been uh, regarded by many as a status symbol. Uh, the Chinese loved the Mauser broom handle. In fact, this particular Mauser that I'm holding uh, was a gun that was intended for a uh, Chinese contract of some type. Uh, it does have Chinese markings and things like that. Uh, the Chinese loved the Mauser broom handle. And they used them in great numbers throughout the various conflicts uh, that they were in and everything like that. Uh, another interesting feature of the gun, you know, it does have this kind of long skinny barrel, which is really crazy. It has tangent sights, so it has a tangent just like you would see on a Mauser rifle. So that tangent follows over to the pistol design. It has a slotted frame, and the reason that it gets its name, the broom handle, is because of the unique shape of the grip. It does look very much like a broom handle, so that's why they call it the broom handle. And this was really one of the in my opinion, one of the most artistically created firearms ever. The Mauser broom handle was a work of art. Every single part of this gun is a complex interlocking work of <laughs> just random parts. Like the only screw in this entire gun is the screw that holds the grip panels on and that's it. The rest of it is all clockworks and leaf springs and just really, really fine fitment. All right, the bolt travels within this uh, massive upper receiver, and it's basically just this long uh, square-shaped bolt. And it's, uh, you know, it's a really neat gun. You've got a stripper clip notch right here, and it's intended to be fed uh, with stripper clips. Another interesting part of the Mauser broom handle was the fact that uh, it was 
I don't know if it was the first gun to really be designed around using like a shoulder stock in conjunction with the gun, but it was certainly one of the first uh, militarily viable guns to utilize a shoulder stock. So that really puts the Mauser broom handle technically sort of as like the first PDW because you've got this, uh, you know, it's a little ungainly by today's standards, but you do kind of have this long and ungainly stock, which really allows you to almost use this like a, a little carbine in a way. Uh, Mauser also made a bunch of these guns in carbine form with longer barrels, longer sight radius, and they were intended to be used as a carbine. Uh, some of those guns were made in limited numbers and some of them were fielded in limited numbers, but uh, the most common version that you'll see of this gun is definitely just what you see here, good old standard Mauser broom handle. Uh, the caliber that it fires is 30 Mauser. It's a bottleneck 30 caliber cartridge. And up until 1935, it was the highest velocity uh, <laughs> at King of the Hill, okay? 357 Magnum came out around 1935, and that's when the uh, Mauser broom handle cartridge was trumped in terms of power. Uh, now, granted, I think the Colt Walker was still kind of King of the Hill in terms of physical power that the gun was putting out. Uh, but in my opinion, in terms of just available firepower, this thing was king of the hill for quite a while and the sales of the Mauser broom handle and how well they fared with various militaries around the world, not to mention civilian contracts, these guns did extraordinarily well and they provided the Mausers uh, with just a ton of business and everything around that time and, and they were just killing it. I mean, people all around the world were ordering these Mauser broom handles as a status symbol and because it was the newest kid on the block it was literally like the newest craziest thing that was out there at that time i mean you got to think around 1896 what was really happening in terms of handgun designs i mean when you point to that that kind of turn of the century time i mean this was a really revolutionary thing at the time it was a it was a crazy thing that they were doing and it was really the first like truly mass produced military handgun semi-automatic and uh, just wonderful. So I'm gonna shoot it with the stock this time. This particular gun, you notice I have another broom handle here. This particular gun's been giving me some issues, but we are gonna try to shoot it. We'll give her a mulligan, she's old guys. And then we're gonna talk about a uh, kind of a famous copy of the broom handle here in a moment. Uh, these guns are neat. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get her to work. Now these stripper clips are definitely a little bit on the old side, uh, but we're gonna try our best. Okay, so to load it, down the hatch with the stripper clip, remove the stripper clip, the bolt automatically drops on the first cartridge, the gun's ready to fire. The safety is located on the left side of the firearm, up is safe, down is fire. All right, we're gonna try to take out our evil watermelons back there, and hopefully this gun is gonna work for me. Well guys, looks like she's still got it. That's 10 for 10. Yeah, uh, it's so exciting to get behind these types of guns and just really see them doing uh, what they were intended to do. Now guys, if you were in a war back then and you were armed with this, you were, uh, you were something, okay? And trust me, back then they knew it too. <laughs> And that's just one of the things that made the Mauser broom handle just such a cool tool. So hopefully she's going to work again for me. I did respring both of these guns. Um, you can obtain uh, spring kits through like Wolf and uh, those companies. You can get the, the Mauser broom handle spring kits. They're not too bad. All right. Strip a clip. There you go. Not too bad. All right, I'm gonna pick up the pace and just try to take out some bogeys up close here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, let's try again. Now, you probably didn't see in the film what just happened. One of the kind of weird things about the Mauser broom handle and what'll happen sometimes is the second round before the last round sometimes will kind of popcorn out of the top. 
and fly past the user's head. Now, I don't know. I didn't count those shots, but that might have been nine shots because I felt something hit me in the head right here. And I think it was a live round being jettisoned from the gun. It was a problem that kind of always plagued them. And especially once parts tend to get a little bit more worn out, sometimes they'll throw a live round out of them. Oddly enough, they'll still work and they'll still feed until they're empty, but it'll, it'll tend to throw a live round here and there. And that's not the first time that's happened to me, not only with this broom handle, but with other ones. Another interesting thing to, to note is that they also did a version of this broom handle uh, that they called the Red 9. You can identify those by a Red 9 carved into the grips, and those were guns that were converted or made in 9mm. Uh, so they did these in a couple of different calibers. 8mm Gasser, uh, they did the 30 uh, Mauser, which was the most common caliber. Uh, a few other experimental cartridges, they did 9mm in these. Also, Navy Arms at one point made like a large frame version of this gun in 45 ACP. Uh, which is really cool. And I think there's a custom gun maker somewhere that will, if you send him, well, actually I'm thinking of the Lugers. I'm, I'm, I'm getting my gun designs mixed up, but there's a guy that'll take two Lugers and cut them in half and weld them together and make you a 45 Luger. But that's another story for another day. Uh, but these guns have really found their way into popular culture. Uh, famous users of this gun, uh, Winston Churchill carried the Mauser broom handle and he thought very, very highly of the Mauser broom handle uh, when he was a young man. Uh, in warfare and back when he was a young officer he carried the Mauser broom handle and thought very highly of it. Uh, also if you watch a little movie called Star Wars you're probably familiar with Han Solo and you notice his blaster is modeled after a Mauser broom handle. In fact a lot of the guns in Star Wars and the uniforms in Star Wars are um, basically modeled after German, a lot of German weaponry. So that's one interesting thing about Star Wars. If you look at a lot of the Empire uh, you know, and the weapons that they use, you will see that a lot of them are German designs, like the stormtroopers use the Stins, which of course, you know, it's a, a Sterling, I'm sorry, not a Sten. So the stormtroopers carry those Sterlings. But then if you look at a lot of the shock troops and the guys that carry like the big heavy weaponry on, on Star Wars, you'll notice that a lot of those guys have like MG-34s and MG-42s. And of course, they're just doctored up to look all space age. But there's a lot of, of that kind of little nods in Hollywood that go into prop guns. And the Mauser broom handle, really, if you think about heroes in movies and you think about Han Solo, I mean, he is a very, very famous user of the Mauser broom handle in the form of his blaster. So that's one interesting thing to note about the Mauser broom handle as well. Uh, the Mauser was such a popular gun overall that a lot of companies started uh, copying these guns as well. This is an Astra Model 900. Now, it's not a direct copy of the Mauser broom handle. Uh, it actually does have some slight improvements over the Mauser broom handle. Uh, but it just goes to show how popular the guns were that a lot of firms would actually uh, wind up copying the guns uh, and, and everything like that. So uh, this is an example of a broom handle variant that you can buy for a lot less money than a Mauser, but still scratch the itch of being able to take them out and shoot them, have fun with them and everything like that. All right, so we are going to shoot the Astra. Uh, let's see how well it fares. I'm going to go ahead and attach the shoulder stock. There's just a slot on the back of the gun and just a little spring-loaded plunger there, you just pop her on. And then the stock also doubles as a uh, storage device. You know, <laughs> funny thing is, so what if I want to have a Mauser broom handle inside of a Mauser broom handle? So see, now I can carry a spare. <laughs> anyway, enough silliness, let's shoot it. Okay. All right, let's see how the Astra 900 fares. Both these guns have been respringed. Hopefully this will work. Ooh, that, that fed butter smooth, didn't it? All right. Astra 900. Let's see what happens here. Now, when you're shooting these things with a stock, you know, you can't wrap your hand like that because that hammer will pinch you. You kind of have to have a teacup grip and kind of cup it like this. All right. Wow. Okay. All right, see, there's that round I was talking about. Sometimes it'll throw around, and sometimes it'll jam the gun up, sometimes it won't. 
All right, let's try again. It's just the nature of these guns, guys. Sometimes they can be a little bit of a bear. We're gonna be fair on her, she's, she's getting old. All right, I'm gonna rapid fire. I'm gonna see how quick I can uh, shoot these up close and I'm, I'm gonna just try to keep them all in the gong, but I'm gonna try to shoot as fast as I can with this Mauser, with this Astra here. That last round didn't want to pick up. All right, let's swap the guns. We're gonna go back to the Mauser. I'm gonna try the same thing. Just shoot a little bit long range. Some of these stripper clips haven't <laughs> really been working for me today, but yeah, that one not wanting to work. Guys, it's just the nature of these guns. Kinda have to just find what works in them. It is not liking these stripper clips. All right, try again. Found one that it sort of liked. All right. I'm just gonna shoot at some choice stuff here. All right, we're back to the Mauser now. Not terrible. All right, let's try rapid fire in the Mauser here. See if we can get one of those rounds to jump out like I talked about. And of course, there's another stripper clip it doesn't like. And to be fair, guys, we're running really old stripper clips and she is getting old, so just have to, yeah, not really wanting to work with a couple of the stripper clips that I've got here. Let's see, that follower tends to get kind of a weird angle there. Let's see if it'll work now. There we go. Okay, rapid fire. Just for fun, see if we can keep them on the plate. Not bad. We got the air full of brass. We got all the rounds on target. <laughs> That's not too terrible. I don't think we dropped a round out of the gun, like I mentioned before. Let's try that again. It's a really easy gun to keep on target. That's actually not a terrible rapid fire group right there on that target. I pull one a little bit low and left, but it'll uh, it'll sling them right in there. So that's not terrible at all. Guys, we wanted to just have some fun with the Mauser broom handle today and kind of discuss the history a little bit and, uh, and play around with them. They are a little bit of an oddity. Uh, it's definitely not a, uh, yeah, she's warm there. Definitely not a gun for everybody. Um, it is a very interesting collectible. It is a very important part of military history. And um, even if you can't respect the fact that it's a firearm, you have to at least respect the fact that it is a very well-engineered piece of hardware. The engineering that went into these things and the way they were made and just the, the way that they literally built these guns back then was just so awesome and special. And it really, uh, owning one of these guns kind of takes you back to a time when, um, <laughs> when things were just made a lot better. Now, granted, yeah, we had a few malfunctions. We had a few hiccups in this gun today. You know, we had a couple of our stripper clips uh, not really want to work for us or things like that. But once we got ammo in the gun, most of them, uh, yeah, they, they tended to work pretty well. Um, they're very, very interesting guns. Definitely one of my favorite uh, firearms in general. I mean, the Mauser broom handle's always been, in my opinion, just one of the top shooters in terms of taking out and just having fun. And you can see there's definitely a... Uh, I've laid waste everything in front of me, so guys, 
thank you very much for watching today's video. We appreciate all of our subscribers and the people that watch these videos, all of our Patreon supporters, all the folks that uh, support us through the purchase of man cans, guys. That means so much to me and my family. I really appreciate um, how awesome you guys are. Y'all are wonderful. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.